three, two, one. Racing World is presented by Race Control Magazine. Welcome into another edition of Racing World. Good day to you. My name is Darcy Waldergrave. That there is Bob McMurray over there, DT David Turner. Thanks very much for joining us, three lads, with our motorsport problems. If you are watching on YouTube, please like, subscribe, and share. Same goes with Radio Public, Anchor FM, and Spotify. We love the justification. We love comments as well. If there's anything we've said, sorry, if there's anything Bob said that's upset you, <laughs> by all means, please send that in. Yeah, let me know. <laughs> we let would know. love to discuss it. <laughs> give you a fight. <laughs> Stop it. Uh, coming up on the program, very special guest who'll be joining us uh, via Zoom. His name is Andre Heimgartner, and I think we should agree, guys, he's had a tremendous year. Uh, here's a guy that uh, came in on the back of uh, Super Black Racing all those yeah. years ago, yeah. and he's managed somehow to shoehorn to climb yeah. his way in two supercars by hook or by crook. And he was going to leave, um, leave his racing career completely just a couple of three years ago. Yeah. And, yeah, fantastic year. Fantastic yeah. He's, year. he's great. You know, like he was home again over the summer, obviously, in, in what was the BNT V8 Championship and, in fact, won the championship. Won the championship, the yep. But, but you see how he's matured over the years as well, so I'm really looking forward to talking to him very shortly because he's, he's, a, he's a much bigger driver now, if that's the right word. You know, there's, there's some real depth there and he's very talented behind the yeah. wheel. And well, it's lovely watching his progression, isn't it? Because we saw like a lot of rookies when they start off in the season, they they, they, they qualify okay, they've got a bit of pace and it comes to racing, they just slowly drift down the back of the park. So experience behind the wheel and on the tarmac at supercars and how you handle those monsters, yeah, absolute key. And so a few years now in and then he's got a decent car too. That's right. He goes. He's got a decent car, but that, that car has only just been uh, starting to be developed by the Kelly Racing <laughs> obviously, because they didn't have a Mustang uh, this time last year. And you, by the old wrote about you you measure your performance against your teammate, he's performed even better because he's done pretty yeah. well against Kelly, isn't he? Yeah, Honestly. definitely. Uh, Most Bath of the time. Bathurst was good. Well, I'm sure we'll talk about Bathurst. that. Bathurst, no, look, no, 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 I've got to get something coffee. off my chest. Grab a coffee. Got to yeah. guess something. I love the commentary, and I've written it. Cause this is to try and not me let me go off on track. I love the commentary of Neil Crompton. Mark Scaife, not so much. But anyway, but why, oh why, oh why do they insist on talking over the in-car communications? We'd learn so much more if they followed the Formula One way and the IndyCar way. We can hear the voices all the time, but when the radios are abuzz, it, it all gets confused. We've got radios coming in, we've got the bloody commentators talking over the top, telling us what they are expecting to happen when the, ra the racing teams are telling us what's happening. And that annoyed me even more because there was a game of uh, rugby at the weekend, you might have noticed. It was um, Kiwis beating Australia again, like they did in the Supercars. Um, but the referee, he's telling them what's happening. The players are having a chat with the referee. But the bloody commentators are saying, oh, this is what's going to happen, this is what's going to happen. Leave it. Just leave it. When there's communication coming from either the race car or the field or the referee, shut up. Just like they so, do in Formula yeah, I'm One. I'm not going to disagree with I could solve the problem because I can just pull this face Right, down okay, and fine. No, bolt, I, I can wow. disagree with you because well, that's when what you the are, viewers want to yeah, see and hear. We, we want to see the action. We don't need to have somebody droning in our ears when we've got them for an hour and a half or three or four or five or six hours. They can choose their times because they're bloody good at what they do. I'd prefer to listen to them when they're doing what they do and listen to the people who are doing what they do in the car or the engineers at the time or the referee. That's it. That's First time in 20 years I think I've heard anyone complain about Bathurst coverage. It's the gold uh -huh. standard of motorsport coverage. Good on you for, for <laughs> Not saying the coverage, that. Just the coverage. Well, that's you know, part of the coverage. Well, they've it's increased part of the package. They've increased the racing car bit of it with all the communications, but they haven't decreased the voices on top. Sometimes there were three voices talking at once. Well, they still Plus do the good mine. thing. They still, turn, they still turn everybody off when they say, they've got their little wee graphic in the corner saying, you know, turn the volume up. Yeah. And you just sit in car for yeah. a lap, and that well, they can do heaven. it. Then. They well, can do it more. That's it. Let, Thank let, you. Let's see what I'm Andre has to say now. on the matter. Yeah, okay, that's fine. No, you can't. You're already home, Bob. You're already home. Okay, and rest. This is yeah. Racing World Podcast. Thanks very much for joining us. Coming up next on the program, the man we've been speaking about out of Kelly Racing, out of the Ned Car. It's Andre Heimgart. Hey, Andre, welcome to the show. I, I trust you well. And pretty darn happy with what this year has given yourself and, and Kelly Racing in the Ned race car. 
Yeah, um, it's good to be back in Melbourne. It's pretty strange after being away for four months. It's been a hell of an experience. We've been all over Australia and I think oh, I've actually got the trophy here that the team gave us um, and it, it says on it um, the specifics of the trip. So we uh, were away 106 days, 10 rounds. We visited 57 towns, um, 24 different beds over the time and 315 meals we ate out. So um, quite, the, quite the trip. <laughs> to say the least, but yeah, we managed to get a pole and a few trophies along with it. But um, yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, but a bit bittersweet. We're happy, obviously, that I was able to, you know, tick off a couple of things um, and getting the pole and stuff like that. But as far as the overall, yeah, for me personally, I'm a little bit disappointed. Um, just we we had the car speed, but unfortunately, most of the time we weren't able to unlock that. So it was quite frustrating a lot of the time. Um, but yeah, I guess we were lucky to to get the trophies when we did. But when you when you actually look back over the last year, a year ago you didn't have a Mustang to drive, and and now you're well one of the fastest Mustangs up there. I mean the development has been difficult to say the least, but you're still getting results. So you you've got to be happy in a way. I know you're going to be critical of yourself and perhaps the team a little bit, but you've got to be happy with that. It's it was a very difficult journey. Yeah, well, it wasn't made easy, of course, because normally we're in Melbourne, we have the whole facility to try and um, upgrade the cars and get everything going, understand what's happening. We're, we're obviously stuck on the road, basically, with what we rolled the car out at Adelaide. So it was um, not ideal, to say the least. And um, just, just simple things were made so difficult. So the boys at the workshop and everyone put in such a big effort to try and get, um, you know, some upgrade parts um, on the cars. But um, yeah, it, it was made very difficult. So yeah, to, to say we, we sort of used a base car or our starting car, I guess, that we first rushed together, I think it was in something like 10, 12 weeks, um, they built from the ground up. So you can imagine, you know, you're, you're not necessarily, you know, thinking about those, all those little details in that time. Um, we basically raced that car all year. Um, so to get the results we did with that, I think it's very good. But I think we're going to really just um, take these three months and um, or four months and just try and do, I guess, what we should have been doing throughout the year and um, hopefully come out next year even stronger. The thing that amazed me, Andre, I watched the video of Todd flying from, I think it was South Australia, right back up to Queensland to do the engine build for your car for Bathurst. And just, just the work that he put into it, it wasn't... First of all, he flew his own plane to to Queensland, then built you an engine up there pretty much by himself, then flew all the way back and then helped put the thing in. So it was a remarkable effort from, you know, the team. It changed the word team game, didn't it? Yeah, well, it's it's been an interesting experience because our numbers are limited so much. There's so many roles within the team that have had to be shared. So um, normally um, you'd have a separate engine guy or one or two, um, you'd have separate this, separate that. But now people are having to cross over in different, different roles. So now our team manager is now our engine builder. So it's, um, <laughs> it's been quite funny. And uh, I always give him shit about it. And he tunes the engine with, uh, and everything. So he does the, the full thing. So, um, yeah, he, he's uh, very skilled at that. I, I was a bit, you know, um, hesitant to start with. I'm like, oh, I don't know how this is going to go. Because uh, <laughs> in the supercar game but he actually um of course has done many things with engines with race boats all sorts of stuff in the past so he did a fantastic job and all season really um we had no issues and and the engine i put in the start of the season we pulled out just before bathurst or something and had done 4,000 k's and never missed a beat so um yeah it was really solid and just to, just sorry just to complicate matters as well he was a racing driver once, you know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> See, we're not all useless. <laughs> Did you learn anything specifically out of this very bizarre season that maybe you can take forward to 2021? Something about the streamlining of the whole operation or anything in, in that in the entire bizarre time that your trophy put down that maybe actually is going to be really beneficial for you guys as a team next season? Was there anything like that at all, Andre? Um, I think for us, it really highlighted, I think for me and Todd and um, my engineer, what we needed from our team as such. So, um, you know, when you're with everyone 24-7 and um, you, I guess, travel with them everywhere and you have all the racing and stuff like that, um, you sort of learn more about the dynamics of the team, um, what you require or what, you know, 
certain mechanics need to be like, who's the leaders in the team, who's not the leaders, what your team's missing, I guess, in different areas or what could be improved. So it was very interesting to see that. And I guess it was the ultimate team building exercise <laughs> going away for four months, seeing each other every day. So yeah, there's many things from that side of it you learn and um, just even life lessons, for example, I've sort of learned to, this whole COVID thing, I guess, for everyone, you've just learned to take every day um, as it comes. One of the things, and, and we've talked about it a lot, and it's kind of almost been over-talked, but it was very visual in the weekend, and I don't know for you as a driver how it would have felt visually, but you certainly noticed the lack of the fan base across the top of the hill at, at, at Bathurst. You know, it was probably, of all the racing events we've seen this year, that was one of those places where it really stood out was the fact that, you know, you had very, very limited fans there. Did, it, did you notice it? Yeah, well, it was it affected the whole event. Obviously, normally Bathurst is the one that you can't sleep on Saturday night. You you know you wake up and you're sort of beaming, and then you get to the track and you're real nervous. And the start of the race, you're on the grid, and even because I've never started one in the seven Bathurst that I've done. So normally I'm in the garage, I'm real nervous. I'm like, oh come on, like, and you you know there's all the atmosphere and pump up, but. It was very strange because the day we went there, there there's, the town was pretty quiet. You know, you arrive to the track, there's not, no camper vans, no one's camping. There's no kids riding around on bikes everywhere. So that, that atmosphere changed. For me personally, I was not, it's the least nervous race I've ever had almost in my life. It was almost like, okay, well, we're about to start the Bathurst. And I was like, oh, might as well start Dylan. And he started the race and it was all pretty relaxed. And like it's um yeah it was a bit strange without the you know the jets going over the top and all that extra stuff that builds it up is um yeah it left me personally a lot more relaxed um but yeah not quite as um you know i guess okay. nervous or, or um you know with that atmosphere but you qualified 14th you were fastest in the warm-up and you finished 11th now during that race it rained a little bit did that give you, the team, anybody, a bit of a heart flutter at the time? Because that looked really dodgy up the top of the mountain. Yeah, well, with the with the qualifying, we um, had a bit of a mishap in the pits. We um, dropped the car um, on on the ground without the wheels on it, um, yeah. due to just to a, um, a, a error with a, a valve that we have on the spike that goes in the car. And anyway, it bent the front rails. And this was before the practice, before... Oh. qualifying so oh jesus this was a nightmare and then so what it did is obviously bent the rails which affects the front angle of the splitter so we went they try to fix it the best they could but then we went into the practice before qualifying it you tune the car you do all that sort of stuff um and um it was moving the front splitter and it moved down so whenever i was braking um anywhere hard the, the front splitter would sit on the ground and then i'd lose all the front arrow and then i'd go flying off so it was really annoying we <laughs> well, weren't able really. to <laughs> <laughs> no, well, it was really annoying because that, that's a session you need to fine tune you need to get your confidence for qualifying you know you need to do all that sort of stuff um and and we weren't able to do that so um we managed to weld um uh, some stuff to it and make it so it wouldn't move as much but in qualifying it still moved and um yeah that's sort of what what did it for us which is really upsetting because we we're extremely fast we're fourth fastest in the fir in the third practice and um, the car's feeling really good so that was a, a bit disappointing in the race um, yeah you mentioned when it rained we uh, we came in to put uh, wets on because actually when you looked out the back and you, you, you took everything into consideration it looked like it was going to rain a lot longer than it actually did um, of course hindsight would have been a wonderful thing at the time to sort of know um, not to because that, that really stuffed us up where to do two extra pit stops and um, almost went a lap down so that sort of ruined it for us and then we, uh, you know we had to come back from there but we had great speed um, the boys did everything well um, Dylan my co-driver drove really well um, so overall I think it was positive it was um, just just one of those ones that was meant to be but glad to finish it compared to last year. So what happens now for you, Andre? Obviously, you're packing everything up. Um, you're going to stick it all in the back of the mus You are in a Mustang, aren't you? Turn us around. Give us a look at your steering wheel. I'll just, just prove the point that the sponsors have looked after you. That'd be uh, good to see. Yeah, look at that. Oh, there you go. Okay. That's the story. But so what happens now over the... It's <laughs> a removal Mustang. So you're kind of... You're homeless in a different sense. <laughs> He's living in his car. It's not a bad car. Well, that, that's, that's where all my house is in. It. That's where all my house is in at the moment, in that taxi box. 
that's the house and then that's everything there. <laughs> Holy. So, so what happens? Uh, you come back over here, you, you're going to be competing. What's, what's your general schedule over the next uh, few months as far as racing is concerned? Um, well, racing, it's, uh, it's up, up in the air. I'm going to sort some of that this week. I might even make a return to some, some form of speedway um, in the off season. I really want to just have some fun. And um, this year has obviously been lots of ups and downs. So, um, but yeah, I'll be going back this Friday. I have to do two weeks isolation. And then um, I plan on basically being there until January in New Zealand. So just spending time with the family and um, there's nothing better than a Kiwi summer, I guess. No, you're right about yeah. that. No. Yeah. Well, it started. <laughs> yeah, that's beautiful here, isn't it? Now, I guess from the way you're talking, you are back with Kelly Racing next year. So presumably the, the finance career that was once mooted is kind of on hold at the moment. Yeah, yeah. So my, my contract goes to the end of next year. So um, that's nice. It's a new thing for me. Obviously, it's been good not to have to get to the end of this year. And you're like, oh, Jesus, what am I doing? Trying to do deals here, deals there. And you're stressed. Am I going to be driving? Am I going to be working at Woolworths? What's happening? So um, <laughs> that, 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 that's been pretty good. But yeah, the finance thing, it's, um, that's been pretty much shut down anyway um, by default because of COVID. So yeah. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty quiet. I still do a little bit of stuff with Plus Fitness on that front, but yeah, um, not too much there. It's sort of um, trying to concentrate on the racing, I guess. Anyone else you'd like to thank sponsor-wise or in the team before we uh, let you get on with your, your busy moving day, Andre? Um, uh, no, one, no one in particular. I guess it's just um, everyone, like what everyone um, thinks. You know, it's amazing to all the Victorian teams and everyone that's made the sacrifice for the last year because um, if we didn't go away racing, the series wouldn't have continued with, you know, sponsorship deals would have fell over, um, TV deals would have fell over and and then you would have been in a lot of trouble and the whole, you know, series as we know it would have changed forever. So um, I'm just very thankful for, for my own job security and for everyone that relies on the sport for a job that everyone managed to pitch in and, and get it done at the end of the day. Absolutely. Fantastic. And on that, we uh, wish you uh, a wonderful move. Good luck in your quarantine for a couple of weeks locked in your room. But uh, you know how lovely it is back here in NZ when you do arrive uh, out of Kelly Racing, out of the Ned Mustang. Andre Heimgartner, thanks very much for your time. Wonderful year, even though you don't necessarily agree. We're looking for bigger things next year, my friend. Much bigger things. Cheers, brother. Travel safe. No worries. Perspective Group is a leading media production company based in Auckland, New Zealand. Established in 2009 by former TVNZ producer David Turner, Perspective Group offers you a vast arrangement of media options to fit any size or budget. It covers truly global services supported by some of New Zealand's leading media talents. For more information, contact Perspective Group Limited at perspectivegroupltd at gmail.com and check out the website perspectivegroupltd.com where you'll find even more information on creating your media solutions. You have a dream. You have all the drive in the world. You have talent to burn. Now all you need is a chance. Toyota are committed to developing and nurturing New Zealand's next generation of world-class racing drivers. Because if you can dream it, we can do it. Welcome back to the Racing World Podcast. Thanks very much uh, for joining the program. And we've got a rather large race coming up on Monday, David Turner. This is... Game the be-all and end-all. And you've got a great time. stat out of this. I think we've discussed it before about how tight this IndyCar series is. Well, I've said it before as well, and, and it's credit to the series. So I can confirm that this will be the 15th straight year that the title has gone to the very last race. Really? Yes. Good Did you hear that, yes. Formula One? Hey? So Did you hear that? It just, <laughs> Not it the just, first race, the last race. For <laughs> anyone who knocks IndyCar and go, oh, well, they go on roundy rounds or whatever, doesn't matter. At the end of the day, they've got the formula right. It goes to the wire, and I think that that says a lot about the quality of the sport. Yeah, sure, maybe spec series, la, 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 but 15 straight years it's gone to the wire. Dixon, he's got a bit of a job in front of him. It's not, you know, it's not out of the woods, but... He's got, he's got an easier job than New, Newgarden. Yep, and 
he's got a damn sight better job than, say, Will Power, who doesn't yeah. have a job but yeah. as such in the race in terms of the championship. Surely the worm's got to turn from him. There's luck and well, – luck, sorry, Bob. <laughs> <laughs> we don't do luck. What's happened so far of the last few races since he got off to that absolute barnstorming start? You can't buy a trick, can he, the way well, it's gone? The other thing, too, is the fact that when he wins the championship on Monday, New Zealand time – he will have led the championship from race one onwards, and that has not been done in years, years, that someone has led all the way through. Are so, you a commentator? No. Because there is something called a commentator's curse, which I don't believe in <laughs> at all. So, so you're not a commentator. Okay, so right? I'll flip it around the other way then, and we'll pick on Newgarden. <laughs> Chances of a back-to-back -back championship. Ah, the record books don't show that that's that good either, so there you go. Uh, it's um, not just Scott Dixon we're concerned no, about, though. We've got Scott. another Scott involved, and I believe that you're going to have to do a, a special Racing World edition when you get hold of him in a couple of days. Yeah, so we couldn't get in touch with him, obviously, in time for today's show. So for people who are, are watching or listening, um, we'll post a Racing World special, if you like, pre-race with Scott McLaughlin, uh, which should go online on Friday, New Zealand time, and just talk to him about the lead-up to the race as well. So uh, IndyCar have helped us out immensely with... Securing Scott's well so done, DT, because that's not the easiest thing to do nah. to get a. Well, I've got, get a, I've got it now that we've said it, I've got to deliver. But, yeah, well, um, you know, it's a, it's in place, and, and Kate Davis and Arnie Seabring, thanks so much for the support on that. And, uh, you know, we look forward to talking to that. So you'll see that as a Racing World special in the coming days. And it's it's a big weekend for both Scots. So it'll, it'll be a great race, come what may, that's for sure. Well, so you've been so busy organizing everything, you gave your tin can and your bit of string to Bob, didn't you? I did. I handed <laughs> over the mantle. So, folks, you'll be proud of this. I have given Bob the tin can, the piece of string, and it came with video as well. Except I rejected it because I went there with an iPhone. I went down to... Uh, to Hampton Downs for a, a fantastic, there was about 20 drivers there testing the um, TR86 cars for basically about the uh, forthcoming season, um, of which we'll talk about the new prize uh, structure later on. But first person I called up with really was Daniel Gorn. That's been great. Uh, lucky enough to have two very good drivers. And, um, you know, like a, what a fantastic opportunity to have a... Um, have a taste of the 86, uh, you know, Toyota Gazoo Racing that put on a, um, a day and, 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 you know, you can come and, what doesn't matter what, what, uh, what you've been doing, um, you, can, you can come and have a taste of the, um, the 86 here and see if you want to do the championship. So is this uh, enough to drag you back into a championship in 86 yourself? Uh, if I was 16, 17, looking to do something um, in car racing in New Zealand, then yes, I would be in, but double that age, more than double that age now, Bob. Thanks for reminding me. And, uh, I, should think, um, I should think coping with your company game on is, uh, is probably keeping your occup occupation fully yeah, game, occupied. Game over is ageing me quicker than what I... Game over, yeah, sorry. Game over is yeah, ageing me quicker, especially when people get the name wrong and <laughs> yeah, call it game right. on. But yeah, game over is ageing me quicker than... Um, than I should be, but um, yeah, I, I mean, they're, they're great cars to drive. In fact, with the Academy, uh, the Hammond Downs NZ Racing Academy, we have a couple of 86s that we're going to be using, getting guys up to speed to feed the championship as well. You're driving a Mazda MX-5 for the HRC Classic Trial Register. The season before that, I drove a Honda Civic for Autocross for the Thames Valley Car Club and the Hamilton Car Club. All right, yeah. And, and today you're driving an 86? Yep, driving track an 86. For the first time? Yep, yep. Are you looking about uh, doing that for the, for the season coming up? We'll see how we go. <laughs> so I've come from Harding, current Road Tax Heavy North Island Championship, having a bit of a go on the 286, which is a lot of fun, I have to say. It's definitely a bit different from a cart, but bigger, but definitely lots of fun. You've been doing a lot of laps together so far. Are you uh, getting used to the car now? Yeah, I have. Uh, I'm starting to get used to it. It's still a lot different, but just trying to get those lap times down and keep, keep getting consistent. Um, overall, I'm quite impressed with um, the grip. Um, yeah, outright speed of the cars relative to what I've been competing in. Um, yeah, overall, I've really enjoyed myself. Something you're going to consider doing for the season? Um, I'd love to do it, but yeah, who knows. <laughs> Well, there is a Masters uh, Championship <laughs> as well, you know, it's an all 15-year-old. Yeah, I would rather be competing with guys my age, but yeah, I'm, I'm not fast. If I got the opportunity, it would be great.
So, this structure, Bob, please tell us. Well, I mean, not only have, starting at the TRS, not only have, have um, Toyota New Zealand put in half a million dollars extra into the Toyota Racing Series, the prize fund for the 2021 championship, TR86 championship, is, is I'll read it. This is pretty impressive. Look, for the championship winner, um, you get a test drive in a TRS car, which is pretty good, and 50 grand. Um, New Zealand credit towards the TRS budget for the 2022 season or $25,000 cash prize. And then, but it goes on second place, 15 grand, third place, 10 grand, prize draw, 10 grand, et cetera, et cetera. There's a master's prize. There's a rookie's prize. This is honestly Toyota New Zealand. Yes, I'm Toyota Racing Ambassador, but no other company has supported motorsport in New Zealand anything like what Toyota are doing. And they should be congratulated for it. Stepping back from being an ambassador, there's a lot of young kids that wouldn't have had the chance without TRS and 86 now. So, you know, come and race in the 86 series. Just look it up on the website and come and race. Anybody can do it. Masters, kids, well, you saw the kids there and you saw a master in, in what I was talking, who I was talking to at Hampton Downs. So come on along and try and win some money. Yeah, the continuity is great, isn't it? There's actually yeah. a pathway through there yep. that Toyota are involving, and they're putting their money where their mouth is. And we've got, we've got four. this uh, two-round non-championship Enduro yep. Series coming up, you know, and a great pairing that was announced just yesterday in Auckland, Conor Adam, teaming up with current New Zealand Formula Ford, because I'm going to say Formula Ford, not F1600, mm. champion Billy Fraser. Yeah, Billy's really pretty quick, strong Connor's quick. Great incentive by Toyota that you have to bring in a driver who hasn't been in the series, so it's, it's bringing yep. new growth into behind the wheel of an 86, and as Billy said, it's the first time he's driven a car with a roof and a door. So, you know, it'll, it'll be quite good. He was uh, at the test, and he, you know? yeah, he's not that bad, I tell you. Yeah, yeah he's not that bad. I, I, <laughs> well, I rate both those guys, as you well know. So yeah. it, it, it's good. I think it's really good. It's a big tick to them, mate. Eh? It is. Yeah. Uh, before we look forward to uh, the fun and games next weekend, there's plenty of fun and games on next week when it comes to motorsport. A, a couple of quick words about uh, Bathurst, because we haven't really got a chance to stretch our legs about that. What did I tell you about Jamie Wincup finding new ways... <laughs> To knock himself out. <laughs> Who did. on earth passes on the outside through the cutting on an off camber corner covered in marbles? Jamie Winker. Yeah, there you go. Well, he didn't. Did, did he make the pass? I don't think he did. No. I I shouldn't laugh. It was terrible because oh. those two are such experienced drivers. But again, another way he turns up. It's a race he's won. He but knows yeah. how to do it, it but it's just not it's working. It's an endurance for him. race. You take calculated risks, yep. not yeah, stupid risks. Yeah, we're trying to tell a champion how to do it. I mean, the, the good bit about that, <laughs> Listen, really, Jay, I know how to drive those cars. Yeah, the good bit about that is Brody Kostecki. I mean, he was the literally immovable force. He was a brick wall, and he was driving, for somebody so young, so junior, he was driving fantastically well. As Jamie Winkup said, he didn't do anything wrong. He just was... Impossible to overtake. They had to take chances. And it wasn't only Jamie Winkett who kept behind him. It was bloody near everybody else that was behind him. It was fantastic. It was, a, it was a big call, too, from Supercar to move the start time forward when they thought that, you know, storm conditions were going to prevail. And that, that takes a lot of engineering behind Especially the scenes. Especially when we like water on the track. Well, it's, just, it's not as easy to do as you first think. You know, you've got a zillion odd TV networks yeah. to coincide and, and that sort of stuff. So it was a Really big call. That kind of paid off as and, well. And a word, about, a word about the winner. I want a way for Holden to go out, to go out, Certainly. victory over the mountain. And yeah. Shane Van Gisberg, in that last 10 laps, so the constant restarts, the yellow flag, yep. the, the way he held his nerve, the way he drove that car. Yeah, they say like it was on rails. The penultimate lap, the fastest lap of the day, and it was on rails. I don't think there was ever a chance that anyone was going to get anywhere near him. No. That was a superb drive. And Bob, you're he saying showed. off air before, uh, that the, the wet stuff you're talking about, hugely helpful. Yeah, and he showed class. I mean, he showed absolute class and absolute... What he showed was Shane Van Gisbergen. That's how he drives. It's an area Whatever. where he shines it's a shame, as well, isn't it? It's a shame that the, the safety car... We could go on about this for the next five or six hours, I know, but it's a shame the safety car kind of buggered no, up can't. Scott no. McLaughlin's <laughs> um, race a little bit. Yeah. You know, they were caught out by one lap where Tim Slade didn't manage to do his lap, so he had to go around. And then Scott had to start my uh, 16th, 17th position when he restarted. So getting up the front again was okay, but he was never going to catch them. That that took his race away. So, yeah, a it, it, bit of a shame. And all those people I read on Facebook are saying, oh, it's fake racing, it's, it's bullshit, it's all sorts of stuff. Don't watch it. Just don't watch it. <laughs> don't then. like it. That's Stop the Stop complaining about it and let somebody else watch it who quite enjoys it. I know it's fake racing. As soon as you make a rule for a racing car, that's fake racing. Simple as that, because you're making rules. Fake so I, I know they're all the same. Stop it, Donald. And I know all sorts of things, but I enjoyed it. 
I quite enjoyed it. I always enjoy it. It's a fantastic day, so much so as uh, I watch the All Blacks at about 10 o'clock at night once I finish <laughs> the racing. I'll say, ah, oh, I've got that other thing well, I've got to watch Speaking well. of Enduros, I was at Timaru on, on Saturday for the final round of the South Island Endurance Championship. Uh, great job by the IMS team, um, Johnny Reed and Neil Foster winning the race, but Alex Ribiris and, and Darren Kelly taking out the South Island title in the Aston. And I'm just I'm so impressed by Darren Kelly for a drifter the amount of time he's done in the car, the stints he's done in the car, and the consistency from him over all of these tracks that he's been to. They got another run this weekend for the final round of the North Island Championship, and then they go to, to Highlands in a couple of weeks after that. But really, really impressive crossover driver. So yeah. it just, just warrant, warranted me saying that because I, I was really taken by it. Monday so morning, we, we've got uh, IndyCar, the last race, and Petersburg has already covered off, and Portimao, we're at quite a fantastic racetrack for the Formula Yeah, yeah. I'm yeah. looking forward to them going there. That's that's going to be a good-looking racetrack. It really is. Um, it's going to be a look, good-looking race, I reckon. Um, they're, they're reduced crowd. I'm not sure if they've got a crowd at all because of COVID kicking off over there again, but yeah, they're, they're approaching the end of the season. Um, they've still got a good few to go, and I forget, it's Imola after this race, so Portimao and Imola, good-looking tracks for the next two. Anything else we're looking forward to this weekend? Or yeah. is that it? I, I've got oh. something here. Oh. Um, this <laughs> is go. kind of like not quite my new employer, yeah. but it is my new employer. So go Luna Rosser, I say. Um, I know that'll be controversial, but hey, controversial is the middle name of this show. So um, oh. went Perhaps. to the boat launch yesterday, and I just have to say on a really technical aspect, my God, what a piece of engineering. You know, I know we're a car show, but when you look at the way these things are built, I tell phenomenal. you what, we'd be a nice car show if we were geared, geared up in Prada gear, wouldn't we? Wouldn't that look good? Wouldn't Prada... Think you've got a new job for the there. weekend. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got one more thing to do. Oh, everyone's got stuff. Right. I haven't yeah. got... I've, I've got, I've got, got nothing. Go. Okay. Wait. Now, wait. Everyone's having a birthday on this show. Oh, my God, we're going to set fire <laughs> to the studio before we go. <laughs> it's, oh. Darcy's birthday. So Bob's had a birthday, Darcy's had a birthday, and uh, right. we weren't doing the show. 51 years birthday. old, and I shaved my mullet off. There you go. Thanks very much, Happy guys. birthday, Darcy. Happy birthday to like me. like and subscribe. We're going to go and eat his cake. Yeah, yeah. fantastic. Catch you next Blow week here on, on Racing World. Blow the candle out. Blow the candle out. Oh. Good night. <laughs> Race Control Magazine is your IndyCar fan mag and so much more. Publishing monthly online on issuu.com, you'll find Race Control Magazine there for you to download and enjoy everything IndyCar and so much more. Behind the scenes features, race reports and the entire Road to Indy series are just part of what you'll find along with stunning images captured from the series leading photographers. Grab your copy today at issuu.com to complete your motorsport read. the drive in the world you have talent to burn now all you need is a chance Toyota are committed to developing and nurturing New Zealand's next generation of world-class racing drivers because if you can dream it we can do it Racing World is presented by Race Control Magazine. 